Hi everyone, it's Jan from Jan Plans Things and today I'm doing something a little bit different because a few of you have requested that I do a little bit of a slowed down like paint with me video and um, the review that I did for the green leaf and blueberry paints were okay but not probably um, didn't display what could be what they could be used for a little bit more usefully. So what I'm doing now is I'm painting a whale and I'm just I've just wet the entire paper. And as you can see, I'm just going to dot in some of the paints. Now, the reason why the green leaf and blueberry paints are really good for this is because they're super granulating. So you can kind of see that the paints kind of clump together. And when you want something really textured, this works really well. So what I'm doing with my brush is I'm just dotting in a couple of the pigments. I'm just kind of trying to shade it and let and kind of let it run, um, run together. So what I had done first was just wet the entire top half of the whale. And now I'm just um, dotting it in with some Vivianite and I'll be doing this throughout the entire painting just to get a little bit um, of variation so I'm just using my brush to sometimes blend some of the colors together and sometimes the paint pulls a little bit in the middle so you'll see me use a napkin to sponge some of that paint off and I'm mixing a little bit of the Vivianite with the Magnetite from the Greenleaf and Blueberry set, which is an extremely granulating paint. And you kind of would have seen me point it out in the last review um, video with Ariel. And I've also done the whale because the prompt for Inktober today is the whale. And it's probably one of my most popular um, spreads on my bullet journal. So I just kind of wanted to show you how it would look if you use proper tools like um, watercolor, pens and paper. So you see me here. I if because there's the paper stays so wet I can actually lift a lot of the um, the paint off and I find that the two colors that I was using the Vivianite and the Magnetite weren't super super um, staining so it doesn't stain or tint the paper beforehand so I can lift the pigments off while the paper is still wet and because I've kind of like piled the water on it does help to kind of blend it I'm using a little bit of the mine green and the celadonite to um, tint the whale a little bit green as as well and what I'm what I'm basically doing is just going through and just layering on a few of the colors and just building up the shadows and I'm still keeping the um, the whale extremely wet so they kind of do just blend into each other and that's okay if you wanted a harder line between each of the sections and then what I would recommend is actually um, letting it dry for a little bit but I'm just painting straight through so this is kind of continuous at the moment because I do want the paint colors to kind of blend in and as it slowly dries I can kind of dot in the paints like around the fin um, where it would um, so where the dry part is the paint won't travel there so um, the pigment kind of sits on the edge and then creates that um, darker natural gradient and you can kind of do this with smoother running paints as well, but it won't get the same effect. So um, this is what's important about you testing your paints and seeing what the, um, the properties of the paint are. So you have a little bit more control over it as well. So wherever the paint isn't moving enough, then I would go back and dip, the, um, dip my brush in some water and then just kind of let it run a little bit more and kind of just encourage the paint to travel. And it does mean that you can just go back and just really gently um, place a little bit of pigment. And as you place the pigment, it will run across and, um, and kind of just blend into the other colors, which means a lot of the work is done for you when you're painting in this kind of style. And I'm just trying to add just a little bit of the diluted paint to the edges of the whale so that it kind of looks like there's a, um, like a softer edge to him. And then I realized that I forgot to do the second, um, the second fin but um, you can kind of see because the stomach had dried already and when I um, added that extra gray to the underneath of the whale you can see how the colors the pigments is kind of bunched at the top and that creates some really um, excellent natural lines or barriers between the paints and you can also see that on the spine of the whale because I had to let that area dry a little bit when I ran my brush along it you've got this um, much stronger line I'm using the whole bean um, gouache at the moment. Um, it's called Brilliant Gold, and I've been re I've been really enjoying using it. It's very different from the fine tech um, uh, the fine techs that you've seen me use in the past because the paints disperse a lot better along the paper. So once it's wet, it kind of just travels across the entire thing. So um, the glitter slowly like moves out onto the paper compared to the fine tech. I think um, the fine tech when you use it the pigment just stays in one spot so it's kind of it doesn't really blend outwards 
and you can really see the brush strokes whereas I think you can mix this whole bean with um, a lot of water and it kind of just disperses really nicely and as the whale dries what I'm doing is I'm going back and then just adding um, a little bit more of the black I'm almost dipping it directly into the pan just to build up the um, build up the pigments in that area and then just slowly work to define um, the shadows around the whale as well so that's um that's what I'm doing now so I'm going and I'm using the finer brush at the moment because I really want to make sure where I'm putting the pigments really makes sense. I'm using a white gouache here because I kind of just want it to blend. Um, what I could have done at the beginning to create that mouth was actually lift that part of the pigment off with some with a wet brush and like a napkin or something. But um, because I was quite happy with how the paints were bleeding in that area, um, I'm doing it with gouache instead. The gouache does kind of, it can look a little bit murky, so it doesn't look as nice as if I had lift the, um, the pigment off to get that natural line. Um, so that's something that you might want to consider trying um, if, if that's what you like doing. But uh, I find that this, um, this works pretty well as well if you're a bit impatient like me. And because the painting is still quite wet, it will slowly just kind of bleed into the, um, into the other pigments to get that really soft color. And the reason why I have to work on the eye a little bit too much is because I just um, I haven't been leaving it long enough to dry because I quite I paint this quite impatiently because I set myself a maximum amount of time like it's either 45 minutes or an hour to work on each of my Inktober pieces and um, this one took a little bit longer because I was um, sitting closer to the hour because I had been um, busy setting up my camera gear to film this for you guys. Um, and what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of doing tweaks because where sometimes like as it dries it doesn't dry as you expect because I guess the beauty of some of these paints is you kind of just let the paint um, express itself and although you can add a little bit of control sometimes it has its own um, its own little personality about what it's going to do so sometimes you just kind of have to like push the pigments around and manipulate it a bit or go back and slowly build it up to create those um, those strong lines that you need so that's a around the the top you know the mouth of the humpback whale the humpback whale and around his eye as well and um at the moment all i'm doing now is just adding a little bit of um of like the little mollusks around um around his uh around his skin skin i don't know what what, what would you call that um <laughs> i'm not 100 percent sure but that's what i'm doing at the moment because i kind of want him to be look like an older whale with um you know a lot of life kind of clinging onto him and the glitter because it's so gritty works really well with the kind of grit of the of the um of the paints that i had been using and you can kind of see like as it dries you can have a little bit more control and then you can add finer lines like at the moment how i'm painting in a few of the underlines for the whale as well and now i'm just doing some i'm just mixing a little bit of the white with some gold ochre yellow ochre sorry and then just getting that creamy pale color just to add a few more of the mollusks um, that kind of hit the light when you're looking at them and that's mixed with a little bit of the gold as well so a little bit of the glitter comes through and that pretty much um is kind of like how i would approach this and because the pigments go towards the edge, you don't really have to line it afterwards. I mean, you can if you want, but I find that if you're using quite a granulating paint, it will create a natural barrier that looks really, really lovely and is quite unique to watercolor pigments and especially watercolor pigments that are gemstone based or earth based that kind of have their own little life. And I guess green leaf and blueberry are kind of like the best at doing this type of pigment. Um, they're not synthetic pigments at all. Synthetic pigments run very, very differently. So I just kind of really wanted to show you guys um, like what happens like how you can use paints like this to the maximum potential because and then just kind of like understanding um, understanding your pigments so sometimes I would do really big swatch cards so I can kind of just see how the paint reacts and then when I come up with an idea for a painting I pick the I try to pick the right um, the right paint for that and I kind of wanted to show you this because the one I did of Ariel, although it's a nice drawing, it probably didn't show off the properties of the paint as well as doing something like this. And thankfully the Inktober prompt was whale and I thought it would be absolutely perfect for that. And um, so yeah, that kind of leaves me um, 
probably don't have that much more to say to you guys about this, but I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to just include a little clip of it sparkling away. Um, and I hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.